So I'll start with what I like in your setup, and that's the following. Club face is squared up behind the center of the ball at a 90 degree angle forward. Club and ball are virtually center of your stance, and for an iron like this, perfect grip. Both hands, even though you have kind of that 10 finger grip, that's fine. Both hands are working together pretty well as a unit, so I have no problem with that. Uh, posture, you could stand a little taller. See, there's too much of a tilt, a hunch right. there. Uh-huh. So you stand a little taller. That will allow you to move in on the ball. See how your, my arms hang below my shoulders? Sure. And yours are kind of just disconnected. So stand a little more upright and move a little closer just to get better connection and balance. But the biggest thing was your feet being so far apart. And I mentioned you've got to keep them just inside shoulder width and maybe widen out the shoulder width for driver and three width, but not much beyond that, obviously, at max. Okay. It just helps you pivot better. We're going to watch the club as it goes away from the ball now. The takeaway. So you can see how the club gets kind of lifted. So your arms and hands lift the club up. Part of that is because you are reaching or disconnected, and your arms go that way first. Then they'll hit you inside. So the club gets lifted with your wrist now, placed over your back shoulder in a pretty good position, but you placed it there. You have to now recover and time this one coming the other way. So coming back down, your arms drop. You re-extend the club head, and you actually square the club face up pretty nice, but your legs, if anything, they trail behind. They follow your arm motion. If your stance is a little closer together, you'd be able to push off with your legs and pivot far earlier rather than having it happen after the fact. So with more core muscles doing more of the work, less effort, more power, and it's going to be a lot easier to repeat is the goal. Okay? Okay.